Hello my friends, and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. The MWM TCG 2032 V16 stands as a pinnacle in the realm of gas-powered gensets, offering a harmonious blend of power, efficiency, and reliability. Designed to cater to the demanding needs of large independent power producers, IPP projects. Power Output the TCG 2032 V16 is a powerhouse, delivering an impressive output range from 3,000 to 4,500 kWh. This wide range ensures that the engine can cater to a diverse set of requirements, from industrial applications to large-scale power plants. Fuel Versatility one of the standout features of the TCG 2032 V16 is its ability to run on a plethora of gas types, whether it's natural gas, landfill gas, sewage gas, mine gas, or coke oven gas, this engine can handle it all, offering operators flexibility and reducing dependency on a single fuel source. High reliability and low operating costs, reliability is at the heart of the TCG 2032 V16. Its design and construction ensure that it operates consistently, minimizing downtimes and maximizing productivity. Furthermore, its optimized design ensures low operating costs, making it a cost-effective solution in the long run. Fast Ramp Up Option Recognizing the dynamic needs of modern power generation, MWM offers a Fast Ramp Up Option for the TCG 2032 BV16. This feature is especially crucial in today's energy landscape, where intermittent renewable sources like wind and solar are becoming more prevalent. The Fast Ramp Up ensures that the engine can switch from a start request to 100% load on the grid in less than 5 minutes providing a rapid response to power demands. Efficiency and environmental considerations. The TCG 2032 V16 isn't just about raw power, it's about delivering that power efficiently. Features like the optimized chamber spark plug ensure high fuel utilization. While the closed crankcase ventilation boosts efficiency by utilizing blow-by gas, moreover, the engine's design ensures soot-free combustion, reducing environmental impact and maintenance needs. Compact design and easy installation. Despite its power, the TCG 2032 V16 boasts a compact design, ensuring easy transport and installation. Its design considerations mean that it offers up to 30% shorter length compared to some competitors, reducing logistical challenges. The long-range ocean patrol vessel, POLA, Arm Reformador, represents a pinnacle of naval engineering, achieved through international collaboration and state-of-the-art shipbuilding techniques. Here's a concise overview of its construction process. The POLA was envisioned to enable Mexico to safeguard its vast maritime territories, spanning 5 million square kilometers of sea. The vessel's design is rooted in Damon's Sigma Frigate 10514, a tried and tested blueprint that has seen multiple iterations. This 107-meter-long ship is the tenth of its lineage, underscoring the enduring partnership between the Royal Netherlands Navy and the Dutch maritime industry. One of the standout features of the POLA's creation was its swift completion. From contract signing to delivery, the entire process took less than three years. This speed was not at the expense of quality, but was a testament to efficient planning and execution. The rapid realization of the POLA was possible due to the seamless collaboration between multiple stakeholders, the Mexican Navy, 
Damon, local and international subcontractors and suppliers worked in tandem to ensure the project's success. Their collective efforts ensured that challenges were swiftly addressed and that the project stayed on track. A significant contributor to the vessel's efficient build was the adoption of modular construction. This method involves prefabricating sections of the ship separately, which are then assembled together. This approach not only accelerates the construction timeline, but also ensures precision and quality control. The construction process was enriched by a smooth transfer of knowledge and technology. This was pivotal for the project's success, ensuring that best practices were shared and implemented. The project drew upon the expertise of around 70 Dutch companies, including industry giants like Thales. Their combined knowledge, coupled with the contributions of local Mexican firms, ensured that the Polo was built to the highest standards. On the crisp morning of October 20th, the majestic MSC Magnifica, stretching nearly 300 meters, sailed into the port of Rotterdam. Her destination was dock number 8 at Damon Ship Repair Rotterdam, one of the largest docks in Western Europe. As soon as safety protocols allowed, the repair work began in earnest. Crews swiftly lowered tools, erected scaffolds, and steel workers geared up for a significant task, replacing a whopping 40 tons of steel. Simultaneously, another team embarked on a monumental painting job. With over 6,000 square meters of hull surface requiring attention, there was no room for delay. The ship's stern also witnessed a flurry of activity. Old rudder systems were dismantled, and the rudder stocks were transported to an on-site workshop. Here, they underwent modifications to seamlessly fit the new rudders. This proximity of facilities was a testament to the yard's efficiency ensuring swift repair operations. While the primary repair tasks were in full swing, another team diligently serviced the lifeboats and their davits. The ship began to transform. Fresh paint made her shine under the sun. Welders expertly fitted new steel plates. And the rudder bearings, after meticulous measurements, were ready for the modified rudder stocks. These bearings were cooled with nitrogen, ensuring a perfect fit into the linkage system. The anchor chains of the MSC Magnifica, integral to the ship's anchoring system, were meticulously inspected for signs of wear, corrosion, or damage. Simultaneously, the ship's stabilizers and thrusters underwent a thorough examination. Stabilizers, akin to underwater wings, counteract the ship's roll, ensuring passenger comfort even in turbulent waters. The thrusters, on the other hand, provide the ship with enhanced maneuverability, especially crucial during docking or navigating tight spaces. Minor repairs to these components were swiftly addressed. As the Magnifica's rejuvenation process approached its culmination, a fresh coat of anti-fouling paint was applied to her hull. This specialized paint serves a dual purpose. Not only does it give the ship a renewed appearance, but it also prevents marine organisms and dirt from adhering to the ship, reducing drag and improving fuel efficiency. Lastly, the ship's propellers, the heart of its propulsion system, were buffed and polished. This process not only restored their luster, but also optimized their hydrodynamic efficiency. Man Prime Serve Hamburg stands as the most significant hub within the Prime Set network. In this part, You Can Do TV will shows you the intricate realm of engine and parts repair and reconditioning. A tour through the workshop reveals the depth of technical expertise available. A foundational step in the process is the grinding of radii, crucial for the optimal crafting of crankshafts. 
Within the facility lies a state-of-the-art machining center dedicated to both repair and reconditioning tasks. Notably, the cooling jacket type 3240 undergoes restoration here. The five-axis machining center, a testament to modern engineering, possesses capabilities for drilling, milling, and turning intricate components, including two-stroke piston crowns and, in certain instances, counterwaves. The expertise also encompasses the complete overhaul and repair of diesel engines. Precision is evident in the assembly of a cylinder block type 5255. The integration of laser welding, characterized by low distortion and precise material disposition, offers an eco-friendly solution that prioritizes the safety of operators. This method proves invaluable for applications requiring localized repairs, A significant segment of operations focuses on the repair and manufacture of service crankshafts. There, journals and crank pins undergo reductions tailored to specific demands, such as the creation of custom cooling pipes. Specialized tools facilitate the rectification of even the most compromised crankshafts without necessitating their removal from the engine. Emphasis on quality assurance is evident, with rigorous crack testing and a range of welding techniques ensuring top-tier results at competitive prices, aligning with customer expectations. This provides an initial glimpse into a large repair task centered on the replacement of a crankshaft. The footage captures the preliminary phase of the repair, which involves the removal of cylinder covers and the elevation of the pistons. Given their weight, handling cylinder covers and pistons poses challenges, especially due to potential swaying during lifting. It's imperative to utilize tools designed for hydraulic nuts with precision, prioritizing the safety of all personnel involved in the operation. The second step of a large repair job involves the removal of liners, which can be quite heavy. It is important to be cautious during this step and take necessary safety precautions to prevent any potential risk of injury. Lifting heavy loads requires proper technique and adequate physical strength, so it is advisable to work in teams to distribute the weight evenly. It is important to avoid any sudden movements or jerks that could cause the liners to fall or shift, potentially causing harm. When it comes to lifting and protecting rank gears during a large repair job, it is essential to handle them with care to avoid any damage or harm to their fragile and sensitive parts. As demonstrated in the video, the recommended approach is to use proper protection around the gear to ensure optimal conditions for lifting and transportation. This protection can include items such as foam padding or sturdy crates to keep the gear secure and prevent any accidental impacts. By taking these precautions, the rank gear can be safely moved without any risk of damage, ensuring that the repair job can be completed effectively and efficiently. In the process of transporting and preparing a new crankshaft for installation in a ship's engine, it is important to keep in mind that the crankshaft is coated in preserving oil at the factory to prevent rusting during storage and transport. However, before installation, it is crucial to remove and clean off the preserving oil, which can be a time-consuming process. 
The crankshaft is one of the heaviest parts of the engine, so special lifting gear will be required to safely lift and install it. When lifting an A-frame as part of a large repair job, it is crucial to use sufficient manpower to ensure that the process is both efficient and safe. Underestimating the number of workers required for the job can lead to potential risks and hazards. Therefore, it is important to prioritize safety by using an adequate number of workers for the task. Lifting a crankshaft can be a challenging task due to its considerable weight. As shown in the video, it is essential to use sufficient manpower and special lifting gear to ensure the safe and efficient lifting of the crankshaft from the bed plate into the transport cradle. It is crucial to take necessary precautions during the lifting process to avoid any potential risks or hazards. Once the crankshaft is lifted, it needs to be transported using a special cradle to ensure that it is moved safely and securely. Are you curious about engine overhauls and crankshaft installations? Watch this video and see how a new crankshaft is transported from the service workshop to the vessel where it is installed and the A-frame mounted. Remember that the main bearing studs are sensitive and must not be damaged during installation of a new crankshaft. Therefore, we recommend protecting the main bearing studs properly and taking care not to damage them. In a large repair job, installing new pistons and liners is a crucial step in restoring the proper function of the engine. As shown in the video, it is important to pay close attention to the O-rings when installing the new pistons. These rings play a critical role in securing the pistons and liners in place and any errors during the installation process can lead to significant problems. Therefore, it is essential to ensure that the O-rings are installed correctly to prevent any potential leaks or malfunctions. This requires careful attention to detail and precise positioning of the rings during installation. By taking the time to install the O-rings correctly, the new pistons and liners can be properly secured, contributing to the overall effectiveness and longevity of the engine. Proper alignment is essential when installing a turbocharger rotor during a large repair job. As demonstrated in the video, it is crucial to take care during the installation process to ensure that the rotor is aligned correctly.
Any misalignment can lead to serious issues, including damage to the engine and decreased performance. Therefore, it is crucial to pay close attention to the alignment of the TC rotor during installation to ensure that it is mounted correctly and functions properly. In the ever-evolving landscape of manufacturing, the integration of cutting-edge technology has become synonymous with innovation and efficiency. At the heart of this transformation lies Marshall Trailers, a company that has embraced the future by investing one million pounds in SAP factory management software, revolutionizing its production process and ushering in a new era of control and precision. From the perspective of the trailer manufacturing process, this shift marks a pivotal moment where technology seamlessly melds with craftsmanship to redefine the art of production. Stepping into Marshall Trailers factory today unveils a scene of orchestrated efficiency guided by the watchful eye of SAP software. This very same software has proven its mettle in managing industry giants like John Deere, New Holland and Kloss in the agricultural sector, solidifying its position as the gold standard in process management. As the trailer manufacturing process kicks into gear, SAP's omnipresent influence becomes palpable. From the inception of an order to the final delivery, no facet escapes its meticulous oversight. Drawing inspiration from the meticulous methodologies of the automotive industry, Marshall Trailer's technological metamorphosis is evident in the minutiae. The software's impact is felt in numerous domains, starting with planning, where it orchestrates a symphony of variables, from staff allocation to raw material procurement, to choreograph a flawless production routine. With SAP's adept management, machines were with newfound precision. Cutting, brake presses, folding, and robot welding are guided by an invisible hand that ensures accuracy down to the smallest fraction of measurement. Standing in the heart of the Marshall Trailers factory, one is confronted by the sight of a SAP-controlled bandsaw operating within the realm of the red zone, a testament to the trust placed in this intelligence system. Nearby, robot welders dance in a choreography of precision, their every movement calibrated by SAP's algorithms. The convergence of human expertise and digital mastery results in welds that are not only strong, but visually impeccable. However, SAP's dominion doesn't end with machinery. It extends to the very environment itself. The software deftly manipulates the climate within the factory, regulating temperature and humidity to create the perfect conditions for the trailer painting process. In the newly established shot blasting and paint spraying facility, SAP's orchestration is evident as it times the application process to the nanosecond. 
This meticulous control guarantees that each trailer leaving the factory flaunts a consistent and enduring finish, a hallmark of quality and attention to detail. Beyond the factory floor, SAP's influence pervades every corner of Marshall Trailer's operation. The software takes charge of the intricate ballet that is inventory management, with over 8,000 made parts and an additional 10,000 bought-in components to oversee. SAP's prowess shines as it ensures that the right part is in the right place at the right time. This harmonization of inventory management eliminates bottlenecks and keeps the production process flowing smoothly. The true testament to SAP's impact, however, lies in the very essence of Marshall Trailer's products. With its guidance, the company has embarked on a journey towards producing consistent high-quality trailers with each passing batch. A shining example is a line of identical VES rear discharge spreaders, flawlessly produced on schedule and ready for their designated destinations. This level of uniformity and precision wouldn't be possible without the guiding hand of SAP. The full automatic anchor bolt production line is characterized by its integration of CNC-operated machinery, automation, and advanced processes. The process begins with the automatic material feeding machine, which supplies the raw materials required for anchor bolt production. The 360-degree raw material straightening machine follows, meticulously aligning the materials for optimal processing. The aggregate conveyor system takes over, transporting the straightened raw materials to the subsequent stages of production. Here, the crocodile-type hydraulic cutting machine steps in, accurately cutting the materials to the desired lengths, consistently meeting the required specifications. Continuing down the line, the numerically controlled sizer comes into play, shaping the raw materials into anchor bolts of precise dimensions, Hydraulic bevel angle cutting enhances the structural integrity of the bolts and ensures a secure fit in their intended applications. As the anchor bolts progress further, they enter the number one automatic production line, a crucial phase housing specialized machines dedicated to various tasks. The combined type hydraulic necking machine operates in conjunction with the hydraulic thread rolling machine to create the distinctive features necessary for secure anchoring. Ensuring the quality of each component a nut screening machine sieves out perfectly formed nuts, guaranteeing a flawless final product. The automatic screw machine of combined nuts expertly assembles the nuts onto the bolts, achieving a seamless integration. Of particular note is the integration of a damping nut bolt, designed to absorb vibrations and contribute to the longevity of structures. A key player in the line is the full automatic punching and pin machine a highly precise device that enhances the structural integrity and functionality of the anchor bolts. The bolts emerge from this stage with added strength and utility, poised for the next phase of production. The journey concludes with meticulous attention to packaging and distribution. A strapping and finishing machine arranges and packages the anchor bolts, ensuring their presentation and protection during transport. The automatic steel strapping machine takes over, securely binding the anchor bolts into bundles that are ready for shipping. Even the final steps are executed with the same level of automation. 
the CNC stack crane effortlessly handles the loading process, efficiently moving the packaged anchor bolts to designated storage or shipping areas. The crocodile-type hydraulic cutting machine takes over to accurately cut the raw materials into specified lengths. Numerical control comes into play with the sizing process, where a combined hydraulic necking machine is utilized to shape the anchor bolt heads, while a hydraulic thread rolling machine imparts the necessary threads onto the shaft. The production line incorporates innovative technologies such as a combined spinning and impact extrusion machine, cold rolling mill, and automatic point welding machine. These machines work together seamlessly to create anchor bolts with superior strength and precision. The twist machine adds the final touches to the anchor bolt design, enhancing its performance characteristics. The automatic screw machine for combined nuts adds versatility to the production line, allowing for the attachment of various nut configurations to the anchor bolts. To ensure the durability and aesthetic appeal of the anchor bolts, the production line includes processes like full automatic punching and pinning. Following these processes, anchor bolts may pass through a painting and drying room, where protective coatings are applied and cured to enhance corrosion resistance. After passing through the painting and drying stage, the anchor bolts proceed to the strapping and finishing machine. This machine streamlines the packaging process by efficiently bundling the anchor bolts for transport and distribution. An automatic steel strapping machine secures the finished bundles, ensuring they remain intact during handling and in transit. Incorporating automation into the production process is further highlighted with the inclusion of a CNC stack crane. This advanced crane system handles the movement and storage of raw materials and finished products within the production facility, enhancing efficiency and minimizing the need for manual labor. The functioning of a heavy-duty face lathe machine designed to process rotor shafts and axles with a load capacity of 120 tons is a complex and intricate process that involves precision engineering and advanced control systems, Here's an overview of how this impressive machine works. Setup and loading. The process begins with positioning the massive rotor shaft or axle onto the lathe's bed. This is a critical step as the workpiece needs to be securely held to withstand the intense forces and vibrations during machining. Hydraulic or mechanical clamping systems are often employed to ensure a stable grip on the workpiece. Tooling and toolpath definition. The appropriate cutting tools are selected based on the specific requirements of the workpiece. These tools are mounted on the lathe's tool turret or post. The operator then defines the toolpath specifying the desired dimensions, surface finish, and other machining parameters. Precision machining. The lathe machine starts rotating the workpiece at a controlled speed, while the cutting tools move along the workpiece's length, removing material with high precision. The heavy-duty nature of the machine allows it to handle large workpieces without compromising accuracy. Cutting operations. Depending on the design and specifications of the rotor shaft or axle, various cutting operations are performed. 
These operations might include turning, facing, grooving, threading, and tapering. The lathe's tool turret can hold multiple tools, enabling sequential operations without the need for manual intervention. Control systems and measurements. Modern heavy-duty face lathe machines are equipped with advanced control systems that ensure consistent and accurate machining. These systems often incorporate CNC, computer numerical control technology, allowing for programmable control of the machining process. Precise measurements are taken during machining using sensors and probes to ensure that the workpiece adheres to the specified dimensions. Surface finishing. Achieving the desired surface finish is crucial in applications like rotor shafts and axles where smoothness and precision are paramount. The lathe machine's cutting tools, combined with appropriate feeds and speeds, create the required surface texture and geometry. The aluminum extrusion process is a highly versatile method used to create complex shapes with aluminum alloys for various industrial applications. 16 inches billet cutting machine. This machine precisely cuts aluminum billets to the required length, ensuring consistency in starting materials. This process involves pushing or pulling heated aluminum billets through a shaped die to produce profiles with consistent cross sections. Mold preheating furnace. A crucial step to ensure the molds are at the optimal temperature for extrusion, enhancing product quality. 6000T Seamless and Seamy Extruding Machine. Capable of handling extrusions with cross sections up to 500 millimeters, this machine ensures smooth and seamless production. Yeah, 450T Stretching Machine. This machine enables the stretching of extruded aluminum profiles, enhancing their mechanical properties and dimensional accuracy. 13.5 meters aging heat treating furnace. Aging heat treatment enhances the strength and durability of the aluminum profiles, making them suitable for various applications. Anodizing plant. With an in-house anodizing plant, the facility can provide profiles with corrosion resistant and aesthetically pleasing finishes. Multi-axle straightening machine ensures that extruded profiles maintain precise dimensional accuracy, critical for the final product's functionality. Forty-five degree double blade angular sawing machine. This machine offers both speed and angular size precision when cutting profiles, optimizing production efficiency. Electric Automatic Cutting Machine. This machine not only provides precise length and size but also flattens the cut surface, meeting high quality standards. Integrated Manufacturing and Quality Control The manufacturing process is characterized by its integration, with each step optimized to seamlessly transition to the next. This integration, combined with professional equipment, ensures that products meet the desired specifications and quality standards. The facility's commitment to quality control is unwavering, resulting in products that consistently meet or exceed customer expectations. Facilities' capabilities extend to a variety of CNC machines that allow for customization and versatility in aluminum extrusion profiles. Additionally, the facility offers an array of painting options, including liquid, powder, and fluorocarbon coatings, meeting different aesthetic and functional requirements. The production cycle of bolts begins with the preparation of raw materials. Input materials are thoroughly inspected, and blanks of the required size are cut using automated bandsaw machines. The process ensures precision cutting, necessary for high-quality final products. Hot stamping process. The hot stamping process involves heating the workpieces using high-frequency current. The inductor, 
powered by high-tech generators based on new generation transistors, heats the workpieces rapidly and precisely up to a temperature of 1100 degrees Celsius. The temperature control is managed using an integrated infrared pyrometer. Depending on the product, bolts or nuts, the entire workpiece or specific parts are heated. Molding and shaping. After heating, the workpiece is placed in a mold and subjected to an impact press die. The molding process can take place in several stages, aiming to achieve the desired shape with minimal mechanical processing. Automatic marking of the blanks is carried out after shaping the bolt head. Threading. Threading is a crucial step in bolt production. Bolts are produced using automated threading machines with tangential cutters. Threading is verified using calibers to ensure precision. For nuts, internal threading is done using semi-automatic milling machines with automatic reversing. Galvanization. Corrosion protection is vital for hardware products. Two galvanization methods are used, hot dip galvanizing and electrochemical galvanization. Blanks are prepared for galvanization through a series of steps, including washing, degreasing, etching with acid, and rinsing. The main protective layer is applied during the galvanization process, which involves dipping at high temperatures. Excess zinc is removed through centrifugation, and passivation is performed to normalize protection. During hot dip galvanization, the bolts are subjected to a high temperature zinc bath, resulting in the creation of a robust zinc layer on the surface. This layer not only provides a formidable shield against corrosion, but also grants the bolts enhanced durability and a uniform protective coating. Conversely, electrochemical galvanization involves immersing the bolts in an electrolyte solution containing zinc ions. By applying an electric current, zinc ions are deposited onto the bolt surface, forming a thin yet effective zinc coating. This layer acts as a barrier, preventing corrosive agents from attacking the metal. Final processing. The manufacturing process ends with final processing. For nuts and bolts, this includes calibration of internal and external threads using specialized taps and tools to prevent damage to the zinc layer. The high air oil and gas field located in the Danish sector of the North Sea, represents a significant development in the region's energy landscape. The installation process of this field is a testament to the intricate planning, engineering prowess, and collaborative efforts of multiple stakeholders. The journey began when the High Air Jacket, a colossal 8,400-ton steel structure designed to support the High Air platform, was loaded onto the barge H627 in Vlissingen, Netherlands. This jacket would serve as the foundational structure for the platform, ensuring its stability amidst the challenging conditions of the North Sea. As preparations were underway, the semi-submersible crane vessel, SSCV, Hermod was mobilized from the port of Rotterdam. This vessel, equipped with advanced crane capabilities, would play a pivotal role in the installation process. Upon reaching the high air site, the Hermod faced its first challenge, deploying anchors in rough weather conditions. 
Despite the turbulent seas, the forecast was promising, and the team pressed on. In a coordinated maneuver, the barge carrying the high air jacket rendezvoused with the Hermod at the high air field. The high air field, located in the North Sea, was first unveiled to the energy industry in 2001 with the drilling of the HEJRE-1 well. This exploratory well was drilled using the ENSCO 101 jack-up rig, reaching an impressive depth of 5,265 meters. This initial drilling endeavor was pivotal in identifying the potential of the high air field. With precision, the sea fastening was cut, and simultaneously, the barge was trimmed with ballast to ensure stability. A few years later, in 2005, Further exploration was conducted with the drilling of the HEJRE-2 well. Once again, the ENSCO-101 jack-up rig was employed, this time reaching an even greater depth of 5,399 meters. The results from this drilling activity were promising, as they not only confirmed the presence of oil but also showcased the field's potential. The culmination of these efforts was the launch of the jacket into the North Sea on a Friday evening. This process, which took less than a minute, saw the barge's ballast tanks filled with water, causing a slight tilt and allowing the massive steel structure to slide gracefully into the sea. Ingeniously designed floating tanks and compartments within the jacket ensured it remained buoyant. Following the launch, the next phase was the upending operation. Ballast hoses were connected, and water was methodically let into individual compartments in a predefined sequence. This controlled process slowly brought the jacket to a vertical position. With the jacket upright, the Hermod's crane took over, meticulously positioning the jacket to its exact offset location on the seabed. The culmination of these efforts was the touchdown, marking a significant milestone in the installation process. High Wind Scotland, the world's first floating wind farm. In the vast expanse off the coast of Scotland, a revolutionary idea has come to life. Sixteen years after its conception on a simple napkin, the world now witnesses the High Wind Scotland, the world's first floating wind farm. This monumental achievement stands as a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of sustainable energy solutions. The journey began with a demo version built off the Norwegian west coast, aimed at proving the concept of floating wind turbines. Despite skepticism, the demo exceeded expectations, producing valuable data that further refined the high wind concept. This innovation is a perfect amalgamation of long-standing offshore operational expertise and the need to harness wind energy in deeper waters. High Wind Scotland is more than just a proof of concept. It's a functional wind farm, with five massive turbines that, when looked at from the shore, seem to touch the horizon. Invisible to the eye, 
a network of cables connects these turbines, transmitting the generated electricity back to the mainland. This colossal project can power up to 20,000 UK homes. The turbines are anchored to the seabed using massive suction anchors, each weighing approximately 111 tons. These anchors, along with the turbines, were a collaborative effort between Scottish and Norwegian companies, showcasing international cooperation in the realm of sustainable energy. The floating substructure, the heart of the high wind design, distinguishes it from traditional bottom fixed turbines. With a length of over 90 meters and weighing approximately 3,500 tons, these substructures were meticulously crafted by Navantia in Spain. The turbines themselves underwent an evolution, growing from 2.3 to 6 megawatts since the initial demo. A significant innovation within the high wind concept is the motion controller. This ingenious system pitches the blades to stabilize the floating structure, optimizing power production even in challenging conditions. However, the journey wasn't without its challenges. From managing multiple contracts to executing heavy lift operations, the project demanded precision and collaboration. One of the most daunting tasks was lifting the fully assembled turbine onto the floating substructure. By August, all five turbines were operational at Buchan Deep off Peterhead. This pilot project not only pushes the boundaries of offshore wind technology but also paves the way for larger ventures in new areas. Impressively, the cost per megawatt for the High Wind Scotland project has been reduced by 60% compared to the initial demo. In the realm of offshore projects, the transportation of massive components is a critical and challenging task. The sheer size and weight of these components, such as the 590T offshore tripod or the 212T upright tower segment, demand specialized equipment that can handle their magnitude while ensuring safety and efficiency. Enter the Self-Propelled Modular Transporter SPMT, a game-changer in the world of heavy lifting and transportation. SPMTs are multi-axle platforms equipped with a large array of wheels. These platforms can be combined in various configurations, allowing them to carry exceptionally heavy loads. Their design is inherently modular, meaning multiple SPMTs can be linked together, both side-by-side -side and end-to-end, -to, -end, to form larger platforms. This modularity is essential when dealing with oversized offshore components, as it provides the flexibility to tailor the transporter's size and shape to the specific needs of each load. One of the most notable features of SPMTs is their ability to distribute the weight of the load across their axles evenly. This weight distribution is crucial when transporting massive components like the 590T offshore tripod. By ensuring that the weight is spread out, SPMTs reduce the risk of structural damage to roads or other infrastructure and ensure the stability of the load during transit. The 212T upright tower segment, another colossal component in offshore projects, also benefits from the precision and control offered by SPMTs. These transporters are equipped with advanced hydraulic systems that allow for precise height adjustments. This feature is invaluable when dealing with tall, upright components, as it ensures that they remain stable and upright throughout the transportation process. Furthermore, SPMTs come with computer-controlled steering. 
This feature allows for synchronized movement of the wheels, ensuring that the transporter can navigate tight spaces, make sharp turns, and even move sideways if necessary. Such maneuverability is essential in the complex environments of ports, shipyards, or construction sites where space is often limited and precision is paramount. In addition to their technical capabilities, SPMTs also play a pivotal role in project timelines. Their efficiency and reliability mean that giant-sized components can be transported faster and more safely, reducing project delays and associated costs. The offshore energy sector has witnessed numerous engineering marvels over the decades, but few stand out as prominently as the Velemin jacket constructed by Hirama Fabrication Group for Statoil. This colossal structure, weighing in at a staggering 9,150 tons, is not just a testament to Hirama Vlissingen's capabilities but also underscores the advancements in offshore engineering and the potential of the North Sea. The North Sea, with its vast reserves and challenging conditions, has been a hub for offshore innovations. The Velemin Field, located between the Cavitebjorn and Gulfax South Fields, is one such reservoir that required a robust and advanced infrastructure to tap into its potential. Enter Hirama Fabrication Group, a renowned name in the offshore construction sector, tasked with building the largest jacket ever in its Vlissingen yard for Statoil's Velemin Field. Design and initial phases. The journey of the Velemin jacket began with meticulous planning and design. Given the North Sea's challenging conditions, the jacket had to be robust, durable, and efficient. The initial phase saw the first steel cutting at Hiram of Lissingen, marking the project's commencement. This foundational step is crucial as it sets the tone for the entire construction, ensuring precision and quality right from the outset. Construction milestones. The construction process was marked by several significant milestones. Roll-ups. The roll-up process, which involves curving or bending large steel plates to form the jacket's cylindrical sections, was executed in multiple phases. The top part, row 1, was the first to undergo this, followed by the bottom part and then the top part of row 5. These roll-ups ensured the jacket's vertical assembly, providing the necessary height and structural integrity. J-tubes and risers. Essential for the transportation of oil and gas, J-tubes and risers were fabricated with precision. These components guide and protect the flow lines and umbilicals from the seabed to the platform's topside. Cross bracing. To provide additional lateral support and stability against the dynamic forces of the sea, the cross of row A was installed. This bracing ensures that the jacket remains steadfast even in the harshest conditions. Wellhead module. The heart of any offshore platform, the wellhead module, controls the extraction process. This 210 metric ton module, designed by HFG Engineering and constructed by Hiram of Lissingen, ensures safe and efficient production. Load out and transportation. With the jacket and its components ready, the next challenge was its transportation to the North Sea. The loadout operation, 
a significant logistical feat involved loading the massive structure onto a barge. Given the jacket's size and weight, this operation required state-of-the-art equipment, precision, and coordination. The sail away to its offshore destination marked the culmination of months of hard work. Navigating through open waters with such a colossal structure demanded detailed planning, expert navigation skills, and a thorough understanding of the North Sea's conditions. Installation and Operations Upon reaching its destination, the Velemen jacket was anchored to the seabed, providing a stable foundation for the Velemen platform. The installation process, carried out in a water depth of around 135 meters, was a significant engineering challenge. The jacket serves as a foundation for the Velemen platform, equipped to treat gas and condensate from nearby discoveries. The platform's operations are a testament to the jacket's robust design and construction, ensuring efficient extraction and transportation of resources. The Velemen oil and gas field, situated in the North Sea, stands as a testament to advanced offshore engineering and the potential of the region's hydrocarbon reserves. Located between the Cavite Bjorn and Gulfax South Fields, approximately 160 kilometers west of Bergen, the field has been a significant contributor to the energy sector since its discovery. Discovery and Development The lemon was discovered in 1985 and has since been a focal point for energy extraction in the North Sea. Production commenced on 3 January 2015, marking a significant milestone in its development journey. The field development consists of a remote-operated, fixed-jacket platform equipped with a streamlined separation facility for gas, condensate, and water. This advanced platform is designed for remote control from an operations center located at Sandsley in Bergen, showcasing the integration of technology in modern offshore operations. Reservoir Complexity The Velemen Reservoir is situated at a depth of around 4,000 meters and is known for its complexity. The reservoir is not only fractured but also characterized by high pressure and high temperatures. Despite these challenges, the field has been a significant contributor to the energy sector. However, the recoverable volumes have been revised over time, with the 2021 plan estimating a recovery of around 18 billion cubic meters of gas, 0.2 million cubic meters of NGL, and 2.3 million cubic meters of condensate. Transportation and Infrastructure The extracted condensate from Velemen is transported via pipeline to the Cavite Bjorn platform for stabilization. Post-stabilization, it is further transported to the Mongstad refinery located in Hordaland. The gas from Velemen has a two-phase transportation plan. Until 2023, the gas is directed to Heimdall. Post-2023, the gas will be co-transported with the condensate for separation at Cavite Bjorn. Subsequently, the gas is processed at Colesness, north of Bergen, before being routed to the European gas markets. An added feature of the Velemen field is its electricity supply, which is sourced from Cavite Bjorn through a submarine cable. Recent Discoveries In a significant development, Statoil announced a new gas discovery near the Velemen field, named Velemen West, two years after Velemen commenced its operations. 
This discovery is estimated to contain between 20 and 50 million barrels of oil equivalent. Gunnar Nacken, Statoil's senior vice president for the Operations West Cluster, emphasized the importance of this discovery for the further development of the lemon. He highlighted the opportunities that still exist in the North Sea and the potential value these reserves can bring. Veja Mate Offshore Wind Farm Installation The Veja Mate Offshore Wind Farm stands as a testament to the marvels of modern engineering and the potential of renewable energy. Located approximately 130 kilometers north of Eemshaven in the German section of the North Sea, this wind farm boasts a capacity of 400 megawatts, enough to power 400,000 homes in Germany. The wind farm is situated about 95 kilometers NW from Borkum Island in the German exclusive economic zone, an area renowned for its strong and consistent winds. With water depths ranging from 39 to 41 meters, the installation of the wind farm presented unique challenges. The project's scope encompassed the design, procurement, manufacture, transport, and installation of the foundations for 67 wind turbines. These foundations consisted of enormous monopiles and transition pieces. The monopiles, designed and fabricated in Rostock, Germany, are truly colossal. They are the world's largest, with a staggering length of up to 85 meters, a diameter of 7.8 meters, and weighing up to 1,300 tons. The transition pieces, each weighing 350 tons, were fabricated in Aalborg, Denmark. Both components were then transported to a marshalling yard at Eemshaven, Netherlands, in preparation for installation. The installation process was spearheaded by the Sea Jack Skyla, a new generation jack up installation vessel equipped with a crane capable of handling 1,500 tons. This vessel was responsible for installing the monopiles, while the Sea Jack Zaratan transported and installed the transition pieces. The installation strategy involved transporting three monopiles at a time on the Skyla and six transition pieces at a time on the Zaratan, ensuring the project proceeded in sequence. A significant aspect of the installation was the scour protection, executed using Boscaliz's fall pipe vessel, the Rock Piper. This process was initiated after a thorough unexploded ordnance detection and removal across the site. Noise mitigation was another crucial component of the project, given the strict underwater noise requirements in Germany. To meet these requirements, Boscalis employed a hydro sound damper on the gripper frame and a double bubble curtain, ensuring that the noise levels remained within the agreed limits. The Veja Mate project was completed in the fall of 2016, with the wind farm expected to be fully operational by the end of 2017. This endeavor showcases the expertise in EPCI project management and the installation of offshore wind turbine foundations. The success of the Veja Mate project is a testament to the dedication, innovation, and resilience of all the teams involved, paving the way for future offshore wind energy projects. The Tricolor, a car carrier owned by the Norwegian shipping company Will Wilhelmsen, and operated by Wellenius Wilhelmsen Logistics, met a tragic fate. The vessel, laden with over 2,800 brand new cars destined for the American market, was struck by the container vessel Kariba, causing it to capsize and sink within half an hour. This event set the stage for one of the most complex and extensive salvage operations in maritime history.
The collision with the Kariba caused the tricolor to sink rapidly, coming to rest on its port side at the bottom of the channel. Fortunately, the ship's 24 crew members were able to evacuate in time, avoiding any loss of life. The sunken tricolor posed a significant threat to one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. Additionally, it began leaking bunker oil. The owner's priority was to minimize environmental damage. The Asian Hercules II, a floating shear leg, was dispatched to the site to serve as a stable platform for the salvage team. Divers were sent down to inspect the vessel and to initiate the process of removing the oil trapped inside. The tricolor's sinking was not just a logistical challenge but also an environmental concern, primarily due to the vast amount of oil on board. The ship's position, resting on its side, made conventional oil removal methods impractical. To address this, the salvage team had to innovate. Recognizing that the vessel's orientation provided access to the bottom of the oil tanks, they decided to approach the problem from beneath. Using specialized drilling equipment, they punctured the tanks, creating access points. To ensure that the oil could be safely extracted without spilling, valves were meticulously attached to these holes. These valves acted as controlled gateways, allowing the oil to be pumped out systematically. Over an intensive two-month period, the team worked tirelessly, extracting oil and transferring it to separate containment units. Their efforts were commendable, successfully removing the majority of the 2,100 tons of oil on board. However, the tricolor's complex structure meant that some oil reservoirs remained inaccessible. Despite the team's best efforts, a portion of this trapped oil inevitably found its way into the sea, underscoring the challenges and limitations of such salvage operations. Once the immediate environmental threat of the oil was addressed, attention turned to the colossal task of removing the tricolor's wreck. Recognizing the scale and complexity of the operation, the ship's owners sought the expertise of industry leaders, they contracted a consortium that brought together the specialized skills of several companies, Smith Salvage and Multraship from the Netherlands, and Scaldis and Ors from Belgium. This collaboration ensured a blend of experience, resources, and innovative techniques. Given the tricolor's size and the potential risks of lifting such a massive structure intact, a strategic decision was made. The vessel would be segmented. The plan was to cut the tricolor into nine sizable sections, each of which could be managed more safely and efficiently than attempting to salvage the ship as a whole. The process of segmenting a ship of the tricolor's magnitude was unprecedented. It required precision cutting tools, underwater expertise, and a coordinated effort between the teams above and below the water. Each section, once separated, was then individually lifted and transported for further dismantling and recycling. Two critical phases of this operation were the cutting of the sunken vessel into manageable sections and the subsequent lifting of these sections for transportation and scrapping.
cutting process, setting the stage. To begin the cutting process, two massive work platforms were strategically assembled on either side of the tricolor's submerged wreck. These platforms were not just ordinary structures, they were specially designed to provide stability in the challenging underwater environment and to support the heavy machinery and equipment required for the operation. The special cutting wire. The primary tool for this operation was a unique cutting wire, which had previously proven its efficacy in the salvage of the Russian submarine, Kursk. This wire was not a simple strand, but a sophisticated piece of engineering. It was made up of a series of small cylinders strung over a steel wire. These cylinders were coated with a material known as wedia, a blend of special types of steel that approached the hardness of diamonds. This ensured that the wire could slice through the tricolor steel structure with precision. Maneuvering the wire, to position this cutting wire beneath the tricolor, a flexible drill was employed. This drill was designed to penetrate the seabed, navigate beneath the wreck, and emerge on the other side. Once the drill had created a pathway, a hollow tube was pulled back through, creating a conduit for the cutting wire. The wire was then threaded through this tube, positioning it beneath the vessel and setting the stage for the cutting operation. The cutting operation. With the wire in place, the real challenge began. The wire was pulled taut and then moved back and forth between the two platforms, effectively acting as a saw. This sawing action, powered by large winches on the platforms, methodically sliced the tricolor into nine distinct sections. The precision and effectiveness of this method were evident in the clean cuts achieved, even through the ship's multiple decks and its engine room. The lifting process. Each section of the tricolor presented its unique challenges. The vessel had been cut into nine distinct sections, each varying in weight and structural integrity. The process began with the shear legs being positioned strategically around a section. Multiple cables, attached to the section, were then connected to the shear legs. As the lifting commenced, the first sight was often the lifting frames, which had been previously welded to the sections to facilitate the process. These frames were crucial, especially given the weakened state of the vessel after months underwater and the cutting process. The lifting was deliberately slow. This was not just to manage the immense weight, but also to allow water trapped within the sections to drain properly. Rapid lifting could have caused a sudden shift in weight, potentially leading to catastrophic consequences. Moreover, the even distribution of weight between the two shear legs was paramount. Any imbalance could strain the equipment and endanger the entire operation. Challenges and precision. The tricolor structure had been compromised not only by the sinking, but also by the cutting process and the natural forces it was subjected to while submerged. This meant that each section, while massive, was also fragile. The shear legs, while powerful, had to operate with a surgeon's precision. Divers played a crucial role during this phase. They continuously monitored the sections as they were being lifted, ensuring that the cables were holding and that the sections were not breaking apart. Their feedback, relayed in real time to the surface team, was invaluable in making on-the-spot decisions.
Transportation to Zebra Once a section was securely lifted above the water, the next challenge was transportation. A massive barge was maneuvered into position beneath the suspended section. Slowly, with the sheer legs controlling the descent, the section was placed onto the barge. This process, much like the lifting, demanded absolute precision. The barge had to be stabilized to ensure it could bear the weight of the section without tipping. Once the massive sections of the tricolor were securely lifted and placed on barges, they were transported to a specialized facility in Zebra, Belgium. This facility was specifically prepared to handle the scrapping of such a large vessel and its cargo. The scrapping site in Zebra was meticulously prepared to ensure an environmentally responsible dismantling process. The foundation of the site was layered with plastic, topped with metal plates, this setup ensured that any residual oil or contaminants from the tricolor would not seep into the soil, preventing environmental contamination. The process of breaking down the sections of the tricolor was a massive undertaking. Tens of thousands of tons of steel had to be cut, separated, and processed for recycling. Specialized equipment and trained personnel worked diligently to dismantle the vessel, ensuring that every piece was accounted for and processed appropriately. The Tricolor's cargo, consisting of over 2,800 luxury cars, was a tragic sight. These vehicles, once symbols of luxury and engineering prowess, were now mangled and corroded from their time underwater. Each car was carefully extracted, and a strict regime was put in place for their disposal. Manufacturers required a disposal certificate for each vehicle, ensuring that the cars were scrapped responsibly and in compliance with environmental standards. After the primary sections of the tricolor were removed, the salvage team's attention turned to the smaller pieces that had scattered during the sinking and subsequent operations. Using advanced magnetometer and multi-beam systems, the team meticulously scanned the seabed to locate every fragment, no matter how small. Divers were dispatched to retrieve these remnants. Given the vast area to cover and the varied sizes of the debris, this was a time-consuming and challenging task. Cars, parts of the ship, and even smaller metal fragments had to be located and lifted to the surface. The challenge was not just in the retrieval, but also in ensuring that the marine environment was not further disturbed in the process. The commitment to leaving the seabed as clean as possible was paramount. Every piece retrieved was a step towards fulfilling this commitment. The French and Belgian authorities closely monitored the cleanup process, ensuring that the salvage team adhered to the highest environmental standards. The Gemini's Railway's wheelset GR7S is a cutting-edge horizontal lathe designed to provide exceptional power and precision in the machining of wheelsets, axles, and loose wheels for railway applications. This lathe is renowned for its versatility. 
catering to a wide range of wheel sizes, weights, and axle lengths, making it a comprehensive solution for various railway maintenance needs. One of the standout features of the GR7S is its high power cutting capability, which ensures efficient and accurate machining of wheel sets with a maximum wheel tread diameter of 840 to 1,250 millimeters and a track gauge of 1,435 millimeters, the lathe accommodates different wheel specifications commonly found in railway systems. It can handle wheel set weights of up to 5,000 kilograms or 8,000 kilograms and axle lengths ranging from 3,000 millimeters to 4,000 millimeters highlighting its flexibility to accommodate various railway equipment. The lathe's design emphasizes quality output with impressive precision specifications. The radial runout is maintained at an impressive 0.10 millimeters, ensuring that the finished wheel sets have minimal imperfections. The accuracy of profile and difference in diameters between wheels are also held to a high standard of 0.15 mm and 0.10 mm, respectively. The surface roughness is kept to a remarkable 0.012 mm, showcasing the lathe's ability to produce smooth and finely finished components. The GR7S is equipped with advanced technologies to enhance its performance and usability. Personalized interfaces streamline operation, while automatic measuring systems contribute to accurate and consistent machining. The Sofop Heavy Duty CNC Lathe HT Series stands out as a reliable and robust solution for medium sized machining tasks. Crafted with precision and durability in mind, these lathes feature a construction where the major components are made from cast iron, ensuring both rigidity and a prolonged operational lifespan. A standout feature of the HT lathes is their unique bed design. In the HT6 and HT12 models, the bed incorporates three guides, including a split central guide. This innovative arrangement facilitates the smooth movement of the carriage along the tailstock side, accommodating the passage of various accessories like steady rests. In the case of the HT22 model, the bed boasts four guides, further enhancing stability and accuracy during machining operations. The HT series of lathes are engineered to tackle substantial workpieces with an impressive capacity to support loads of up to 22 tons between centers. These lathes are equipped to handle workpieces with diameters of up to 2,000 millimeters and lengths exceeding 3 meters, making them versatile tools suitable for a range of applications. Customizability is a hallmark of the HT Lathe series. They can be outfitted with different turning units, tailored to specific requirements. Options include the four-position square turret, as well as the disc turret with up to 12 positions, featuring driven tools for increased functionality. Furthermore, the design accommodates the integration of a vertical Y-axis, broadening the scope of machining capabilities. The lathes are even adaptable for tasks beyond traditional turning, including drilling, grinding, milling, and boring operations. The reconditioning of a 1600-ton press crankshaft achieved a remarkable feat through precision engineering on a heavy-duty CNC Skoda roll turning machine. This process involved meticulous restoration of the crankshaft's critical dimensions and surface integrity. The CNC Skoda machine, 
renowned for its robust capabilities, ensured unparalleled accuracy and efficiency in the reconditioning process. Utilizing advanced CNC technology, the skilled operators carefully removed any deformities or imperfections, restoring the crankshaft's original geometry to ensure optimal performance. The high torque capacity of the Skoda machine facilitated seamless turning and machining, resulting in a refined surface finish and enhanced mechanical properties. The VDF 4504 TCM Horizontal Turnmill Center by VDF Boringer stands as an epitome of innovation and efficiency in the realm of machining technology. This advanced machine brings to the forefront a seamless blend of high productivity, cost effectiveness, and unwavering reliability. Boasting a distinctive design within the VDF TTM series, this turnmill center is a game changer for manufacturers across various sectors. Its prowess lies in its ability to harmonize superior output with minimized part costs, making it an appealing choice for high volume production automotive OEMs, tier suppliers, as well as those engaged in medium and small batch size production. The scope of its applications is broad, encompassing both shafts and chuck parts. One of its standout features is its aptitude for complete machining of intricate components, opening doors for heightened productivity. The machine's robust construction is a testament to its commitment to excellence. Meticulously designed to withstand demanding conditions, it facilitates complex and simultaneous machining operations with finesse. Its bed, crafted from polymer concrete, embodies maximum rigidity and damping, a cornerstone of stability in precision engineering. Linear roller guides of the highest quality exemplify precision and longevity, ensuring consistent high-level accuracy over extended periods of use. An essential factor contributing to its remarkable performance is the state-of-the-art drives and guideways. These components not only deliver in terms of immediate performance, but also promise sustained excellence, signifying a machine built to stand the test of time. In essence, the VDF 4504 TCM Horizontal Turnmill Center signifies a shift in the paradigm of machining technology. Its ability to marry productivity, cost effectiveness, and reliability, while offering a platform for machining complex parts, underscores its significance in modern manufacturing. Whether it's for large-scale automotive production or intricate custom designs, this machine exemplifies the future of precision machining. This part delves into the manufacturing process of Atlas pipe piles, offering insights into the meticulous steps that ensure their high quality and reliability. Atlas Pipe Piles operates from a sprawling 500,000 square foot facility located in Chicago, Illinois. Within this facility, three production lines are at work. These production lines are capable of rolling an impressive 1,000 tons of pipe piles in a single shift, all of which are of top-notch quality. Quality assurance from the start. The manufacturing process begins with hot rolled coil steel. From the outset, quality assurance is a priority. Atlas technicians subject incoming steel coils to thorough tests to assess their tensile properties and yield strength. This ensures the flexibility and quality control essential for producing reliable pipe piles. The steel coils are then slit to the appropriate size based on the diameter of the pipe piles to be manufactured in a specific shift. Forming the pipe piles, the slit coils are loaded onto the tube forming line. As the steel is uncoiled and flattened, it is joined to the end of another coil through a butt weld. This weld is subsequently cut out and discarded, ensuring that only the highest quality materials enter the production process. 
The heat number of the steel used is engraved into an ID stamp on the inside of the pipe, facilitating traceability back to the steel source and manufacturing date. Efficiency and continuity. To maintain maximum efficiency and continuity, an accumulator stores up to four coils. This setup ensures that subsequent stages of the process encounter no material lag. The continuous coil of end-welded steel enters the spiral accumulator allowing for seamless coil switching without halting production. Shaping the pipe piles. The forming process employs five forming rolls that progressively shape the welded steel strip into a curved form. The bright and polished appearance of the rollers is a testament to their efficiency. These rollers can be changed swiftly to accommodate piles of varying diameters or steel gauges, the rolling presses gradually bring the ends of the strip together, ensuring even alignment and clean, high-quality welds. Electric Resistance Welding ERW. Atlas straight seam pipe piles are welded using electric resistance welding ERW. This process involves passing electrical current through the strip edges of the coil using copper contact shoes. The resulting resistance generates heat with temperatures reaching up to 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite these high temperatures, the process maintains impressive speeds of up to 120 feet per minute. The outcome is a continuous longitudinal weld, characterized by precision. Finishing touches and quality checks. Excess seam from the weld is trimmed off by a scarf cutter, resulting in a smooth and nearly invisible seal. The pipe is then ironed to achieve the correct size and diameter for installation. Ultrasonic testing follows the ERW welding process, verifying the integrity of the weld and detecting any internal flaws. Faulty sections are automatically removed, guaranteeing the highest quality standards. Final steps and verification. After confirming weld integrity, the pipe is gradually cooled down using water and coolant to prevent cracking or splitting. Turx heads refine the pile to its final size and surface finish. Before cutting, the heat number is stenciled on the exterior of the pile, matching the ID stamp engraved at the beginning of the process. This heat number ensures traceability and quality verification. Destructive testing and certification. Atlas pipe piles undergo two destructive tests, the code test and flatness testing. The former assesses the weld's integrity by applying hydraulic pressure until failure or predetermined expansion occurs. Flatness testing involves flattening a sample with the weld oriented vertically and horizontally to verify both weld integrity and steel ductility. Each Atlas pipe pile receives a barcode and original mill test report, MTR, backed by coil certificates from the steel supplier. Shipping and reliability. Atlas pipe piles with lengths up to 125 feet are shipped directly to stocking partners and project sites across North America and beyond. These pipe piles offer unmatched support for deep foundation projects, backed by a commitment to quality, efficiency, and traceability. The EMC Group spearheaded a revolutionary transformation in the field of process automation, marking a significant milestone in the evolution of industrial manufacturing. Renowned as a highly international industry automation solution platform, EMC Group set forth a paradigm shift that would redefine efficiency, precision, and quality within the manufacturing sector. At the heart of this transformation lay EMC's commitment to harnessing cutting-edge automation technologies. The group's groundbreaking initiative aimed to automate a staggering 80% of machining and 70% of assembling processes through advanced automation lines. This bold approach not only streamlined production, 
but also significantly enhanced the speed and accuracy of manufacturing operations. One of the remarkable hallmarks of EMC's revolution was its emphasis on visibility and transparency throughout the production cycle. The group integrated an ingenious system of process visualization that granted stakeholders an unparalleled view into each step of the manufacturing journey. By making every stage of the production process visible, from raw materials to the final product, EMC Group established an environment of real-time oversight and monitoring, leading to superior quality control and reduced inefficiencies. The benefits of this process automation revolution were manifold. The increased integration of automation into machining and assembling processes led to faster production rates and higher precision, minimizing human error and yielding consistently superior results. By empowering operators with real-time data, the system not only enabled quicker decision-making, but also facilitated continuous improvement through the identification of bottlenecks and optimization opportunities. The international scope of EMC's influence cannot be overstated. The group's industry automation solution platform transcended geographical boundaries, fostering collaboration and knowledge exchange among manufacturing companies around the world. This global outlook allowed diverse industries to adapt and implement automation solutions tailored to their specific needs, propelling the manufacturing sector into a new era of competitiveness and innovation. Keba Industrial Automation, located in Germany, stands at the forefront of mechatronic manufacturing with its cutting-edge production facility. Within this facility, a remarkable feat of engineering takes place, the production and testing of high-precision magnetic bearing motors, motor elements for synchronous motors, and magnetic bearing elements on a large scale. This intricate process serves as the foundation for KEBA's long-standing turbo solutions, which have garnered a solid reputation across diverse markets, including high vacuum, aeration, gas compression, and power generation. The heart of KEBA's manufacturing excellence lies in its ultra-modern production facility. Here, a symphony of advanced technology, skilled craftsmanship, and precision engineering come together to craft magnetic bearing motors that push the boundaries of performance and reliability. These motors boast not only impressive power generation capabilities, but also exceptionally low levels of friction and wear, thanks to the incorporation of magnetic bearings. This innovation results in reduced maintenance needs, longer operational lifetimes, and increased overall efficiency. The facility's focus on producing motor elements for synchronous motors is equally noteworthy. Synchronous motors are pivotal in various industrial applications where precise synchronization and control are essential. By mastering the production of these critical motor elements, CABA contributes to the enhancement of various sectors, from manufacturing to energy production.
The magnetic bearing elements produced and rigorously tested at KEBA's facility represent another facet of its commitment to technological advancement. Magnetic bearings are recognized for their ability to levitate rotating components without mechanical contact, leading to smoother operation, reduced vibration, and minimized energy loss. Such elements play an indispensable role in turbo solutions that operate in demanding environments such as those found in gas compression and high vacuum systems. Injection molding is a widely used manufacturing process for producing plastic parts in large quantities. The heart of an injection molding machine is its screw, which plays a pivotal role in melting, mixing, and injecting the plastic material into the mold cavity. To create a high-quality screw for the injection molding process, CNC, computer numerical control, lathes are employed for precise and efficient machining. The screw used in an injection molding machine is designed with a helical flight channel that gradually compresses and melts the plastic pellets as they move along the screw's length. This molten plastic is then injected into the mold to form the desired part. The design and precision of the screw greatly impact the quality, efficiency, and repeatability of the injection molding process. This is where CNC lathes come into play. CNC lathes are advanced machining tools controlled by computer programs, allowing for intricate and precise machining processes. When processing injection molding machine screws, CNC lathes ensure that the screw's profile, dimensions, and surface finish are crafted to exact specifications. Here's how the process typically unfolds. Material selection. Common materials include steels, stainless steels, and specialized alloys. Design translation. The screw's design, often in a CAD format, is translated into a CNC program. This program guides the CNC lathe's movements to shape the screw accurately. Precision machining. The CNC lathe's cutting tools are used to gradually shape the screw's helical channels as well as its core and outer diameter. According to the design specifications, the CNC system ensures that each cut is precise and consistent. Thermal and surface treatment. After the initial machining, the screw may undergo thermal treatments to enhance its durability and strength. Surface treatments, such as nitriding, can also be applied to improve wear resistance and reduce friction during operation. Quality control. Throughout the machining process, quality control checks are conducted to verify that the screw's dimensions and features match the design requirements. This step ensures that the final product will perform as expected during injection molding. Assembly. Depending on the design of the injection molding machine, the screw might be assembled with other components, such as the barrel and nozzle, before being installed into the machine. The use of CNC lathes in manufacturing injection molding machine screws offers several advantages. CNC technology enables high precision and repeatability, ensuring that each screw meets the exact specifications required for efficient and consistent plastic injection. Additionally, CNC lathes can handle complex geometries and material properties, allowing manufacturers to tailor screws to the specific needs of different injection molding applications. The Buhler Extruder is a cutting-edge piece of equipment designed to transform raw materials into a wide range of products through an intricate process. The extruder's operation is characterized by several key sequences, each contributing to its overall efficiency and functionality. The initial step involves assembling the screws, a crucial component of the extruder.
These screws are precision engineered to enable the desired mixing, shearing, and cooking processes. Once assembled, the extruder is ready for the next sequence. During startup, the extruder undergoes a systematic preheating process. Heaters embedded within the machine gradually elevate the temperature to the optimal range for processing. Simultaneously, the control system initializes, ensuring all parameters are within the set safety limits. As the extruder ramps up for production, the raw materials are introduced into the system. The synchronized rotation of the screws efficiently transports and blends the materials while subjecting them to controlled levels of heat and pressure. This combination facilitates chemical reactions, cooking, and the transformation of the raw ingredients into the desired product. In the event of an unforeseen circumstance, the extruder is equipped with an emergency stop mechanism. This safety feature halts all operations instantaneously, preventing potential accidents or damage to the equipment. Once the situation is resolved, the extruder can be gradually restarted following proper procedures. To facilitate maintenance and prevent material degradation within the extruder, an automatic screw pushout process is employed. This procedure removes any residual material from the system, preventing cross-contamination and ensuring the machine is prepared for the next production cycle. For a change in product type or recipe adjustment, the extruder offers a seamless transition. By reprogramming the control system and adjusting specific parameters, Operators can adapt the process to meet new requirements. This flexibility is essential for product diversification and quality optimization. Finally, when it's time to conclude operations, the shutdown sequence is initiated. The extruder gradually reduces its temperature and comes to a complete stop while maintaining proper purging to prevent material residue from clogging the system. This careful shutdown process ensures the extruder's longevity and efficient startup for the next production run. Bus Neater technology stands out due to its exceptional mixing capabilities, rooted in a distinctive operational principle involving simultaneous screw shaft rotation and axial oscillation. This innovative approach, pioneered by Bus as the original manufacturer, enables kneaders to achieve both axial and radial mixing at controlled shear rates. The latest iterations of this technology, namely Quantec G3 and MX, exemplify high-performance machine concepts built upon the tried and true reciprocating screw working principle. Notably, the integration of four-flight technology has yielded substantial performance enhancements particularly for compounds sensitive to heat and shear. Key features and advantages of bus kneader technology encompass an incredibly compact processing length, ensuring efficient operations. This is accompanied by uniform shearing effects devoid of temperature spikes, contributing to improved product quality. Furthermore, the technology facilitates precise temperature regulation and maintains significantly lower product temperatures, pivotal for enhancing process control and final product characteristics. Another benefit is the achievement of a narrow residence time distribution, enhancing consistency and quality in the produced materials. An extrusion machine plays a pivotal role in the automated production of a diverse range of confectionery products, including cereal bars, protein bars, chocolate bars, and more. This ingenious machine efficiently shapes semi-finished materials into these delectable treats, 
It accommodates various confectionery masses with differing densities, consistencies, and compositions, such as sandy dough, shoe pastry, and protein-based mixtures. By extruding the confectionery mass through specialized nozzles, the machine forms an uninterrupted product line, subsequently segmented into bars of specified lengths. Depending on the desired outcome, these bars can be subjected to baking, glazing, or packaging. The extrusion process also enables the incorporation of fillings, facilitated by a dedicated filling feeding station. The Buhler Snack Fix is a compact and efficient system designed for the streamlined production of cereal and fruit bars. This innovative solution simplifies the entire bar making process, making it an ideal choice for businesses aiming to produce these popular snacks with ease and precision. The Snack Fix system comprises two main components that work harmoniously to create a seamless production line. The process begins with the preparation of the binder, achieved through quick and automated mixing and dosing. The equalizing rollers ensure a consistent shape before the precise cutting step takes place. Notably, the Snack Fix system offers flexibility due to its modular design. Operating the Snack Fix is straightforward. The mixture of water and powder is heated up to 80 degrees Celsius, followed by the loading of the cereal mix into the hopper. The preheated vessel then receives the prepared binder. Once the process is initiated, the system takes care of forming and cutting the bars. The products are briefly stored before undergoing optimal cutting and subsequent packaging using the flow wrapper. The Samsung SL25ASY CNC lathe is a versatile machining tool designed for precision turning and milling operations. In this case, we will explore how it works when dealing with a 2.5-6061 bar stock. The machining process begins with loading a 2.5 diameter 6061 aluminum bar stock into the lathe's chuck. The chuck securely holds the material in place, allowing for precise rotational movement. Turning the stub acme thread. Once the material is loaded and secured, the lathe spindle rotates the bar stock while the cutting tool, positioned along the z-axis, engages with the material to cut the desired stub acme thread. The CNC control system precisely controls the depth and pitch of the thread, ensuring accurate and consistent results. Off-center Y-axis milling, the SL25ASY lathe features a Y-axis that can be offset from the center line of the stock. This enables the machine to perform off-center milling operations. In this case, the Y-axis is used to create complex features on the workpiece, such as pockets or grooves, away from the center line. Finish boring. After the thread and off-center milling operations, the machine can perform finish boring. 
the boring tool is advanced along the z-axis, accurately enlarging the existing hole's diameter to the desired specifications. This process ensures tight tolerances and a smooth, precise bore. Cam groove with live tooling. One of the standout features of the SL25ASY is its live tooling capability. This means that the machine's turret holds tools that can rotate and perform operations while the workpiece is stationary. To create a cam groove, a live tool is engaged. The turret indexes the appropriate tool into position, and the CNC control system precisely directs the tool's movement along the X and Z axes, cutting the cam groove into the workpiece. Retracing for chamfer. Once the cam groove is created, the live tool can be programmed to retrace its path to add a chamfer to the groove's edges. This chamfer enhances the functionality and aesthetics of the cam groove, and the CNC control system ensures that the chamfer is precisely applied. Cut off and transfer. After completing all the required machining operations, the lathe is ready to perform the cutoff operation. The live tool can be replaced with a cutting tool designed for parting off. The tool advances along the Z-axis, cutting through the material and separating the finished workpiece from the remaining bar stock. The newly machined part is now a separate component. Material transfer. Once the part is cut off, it needs to be moved from the main spindle area for unloading or further processing. The lathe might have automation options, such as a robotic arm, to transfer the finished part to a designated area for collection. In this part, we will learn about the Nord Stream gas pipeline installation project. The Nord Stream project is installing two 48 inches gas export pipelines from Vyborg in Russia to Greifswald in Germany, through the Gulf of Finland and the Baltic Sea.
The two 1,224-kilometer offshore pipelines are the most direct connection between the vast gas reserves in Russia and energy markets in the European Union. Combined, the twin pipelines have the capacity to transport a combined total of 55 billion cubic meters BCM, of gas a year to businesses and households in the EU for at least 50 years. As the project strengthens the EU energy market and reinforces security of supply, the project has been designated as being of European interest by the European Parliament and Council. Each of the two Nord Stream pipelines is constructed in three sections. Once completed, the sections has been welded together to form the 1,224 kilometers pipelines. This tie-in process has taken place on the seabed in an underwater welding habitat. Welding operations were remotely controlled from the Scandi Arctic Dive Support Vessel, and divers has assist in monitoring the subsea construction work. This is Pipe Handling Frame, PHF. The PHFs move the pipeline ends into tie-in position. They can lift up to 150 tons. Lift bags are installed on the segments and filled with air. Once filled, the bags can lift up to 20 tons, helping the PHFs to manipulate the extremely heavy pipeline segments. PHFs not only lift the pipeline sections, they also shift them sideways to line them up for welding. This is tie-in equipment. The welding habitat supplied by Statoil PRS is a dry zone where divers work without diving equipment to set up the automatic welding machine. The welding is completely controlled from the dive support vessel. The state-owned PGN, Perusahan Gas Negara, supplies over 80 million customers with gas in Indonesia. One of their major offshore pipelines, transporting gas to Jakarta, showed signs of leakage during an inspection in 2013, and it was temporarily fixed with a clamp. 
DCN International Diving and Marine Contractors and its Indonesian partner SGI were aware to contract to seal the tear in the four-year-old pipeline by PGN. PGN decided to carry out a permanent repair to the 32-in. 81 cm pipeline at a depth of 27 meters 89 feet while the pipeline remains fully pressurized Fifteen divers will be specially trained for the PGN project here at DCN in Bergen op Zoom of whom 10 pre-qualified divers will eventually be deployed of this team Nine divers will be spending approximately one month in saturation in order to carry out the repair according to the welding method DCN proposes. This is a challenging project because the repair had to be completed without shutting the pipeline down. Contractors developed a methodology to stop the leakage of the temporary pipeline repair clamp in place. Based on extensive analysis on bending moments at the intersection, a permanent repair by means of a welded structural sleeve was performed, ensuring the long-term integrity of the remainder of the pipeline's lifetime. To be able to meet this project, DCN proposed carrying out the welding work underwater, in dry conditions, through the use of what is known as a habitat. A habitat is a sealed working space that offers divers a safe and protected working environment, while on the seabed. During the summer, here in Bergen op Zoo, DCN carried out a series of dry runs and tests. This is DCN the, uh, the endlessly line. simulated so all the elementary welding tasks necessary to ensure the long-term success of the repair the, uh, at their own location. Line. We're going to find it in Indonesia. The tests were in fact carried out by the same divers who would eventually be required to carry out the work at a depth of 27 meters in the Java Sea, under considerable pressure. After the extensive testing program, all the risks had been identified, minimized, and managed. The containers of equipment were shipped to Singapore, including the complete saturation diving system and the habitat with suction anchors, piles. The Norman Baltic, the DP-2 diving vessel was chartered for the project, equipped with a 100 metric ton crane, moon pool, and helicopter deck. The five 6 meter long piles was installed in the seabed made up of silt and clay. The first pile was used as a trial, in order to determine the required suction force, and to calculate the theoretical load-bearing capacity. The habitat subsequently had to be placed on the remaining four piles. Following the hermetic sealing and purging of the habitat to lower the water level, the first gas containment barrier, a sort of safety clamp, was mounted on the pipeline, followed by the lower and upper sleeve.
The divers were then able to start on the demanding welding process while the gas continued to be pumped through the pipeline. Over a period of 10 days, welding was carried out uninterrupted, while the welded layers underwent continuous ultrasonic testing. Finally, the repaired section of the pipeline was fitted with an anti-corrosion wrapping. Four decades ago, the Brent field platforms stood as symbols of industrial might and energy prowess. These platforms, located in the North Sea, played a pivotal role in powering Europe's homes and businesses. But as time passed, the inevitable question arose, how would these massive structures be decommissioned? The Brent field platforms, after years of dedicated service, were slated for decommissioning. The challenge was immense. These platforms were not designed to be lifted in the manner required for their removal. In 2017, Shell astounded the world by lifting the Brent Delta platform intact and transporting it for recycling. This set the stage for Brent Bravo's turn. The task was not just about repeating the process but improving upon it. The goal was clear lift the 25,000-ton topside of Brent Bravo from its base in the North Sea and transport it safely for recycling. This was no small feat, especially considering the platform's design and the unpredictable nature of the sea. Shell's approach was innovative, Instead of attempting on-site dismantling, the decision was to remove the entire upper platform, or the top sides, as one unit. This involved isolating the reservoir, ensuring no hydrocarbons could escape, evacuating personnel, and then preparing for the lift. The process was streamlined, with lessons from the Delta lift leading to a 70% reduction in preparation work for Bravo.
A significant challenge was how to cut the Bravo free from its 150-meter-high base without using the steel bracing that was employed for Delta. The solution? Shear keys. These were inserted into the concrete walls of the platform's legs, providing both strength and stability. Once in place, a diamond wire cutter sliced through the concrete wall, ensuring the platform was ready for lifting. The world watched as the pioneering spirit, the world's largest construction vessel, approached Brent Field. This ship, with its unique twin hull design, was integral to Shell's single lift concept. The vessel's advanced technology allowed it to connect its lifting arms to Bravo with pinpoint accuracy, ensuring no contact with the platform's legs. And then, in a breathtaking moment, 25,000 tons were lifted in just 9 seconds. The success of the operation was a testament to the meticulous planning, coordination, and engineering prowess of the team involved. But the journey wasn't over. The pioneering spirit transported Bravo towards Hartlepool, where another marvel of engineering, the Iron Lady Barge, awaited. The topside was transferred to this barge, which was then towed to the Able facility for recycling. Shell's commitment to doing things right was evident. Their partnership with Able promised a recycling rate of 98%. The Brent Field, which had been a part of oil and gas history for 40 years, was now setting a new standard in environmental responsibility. The Prelude FLNG, after traveling almost 6,000 kms, has reached Australia. Its mission? To produce liquefied natural gas for a quarter century. But before that, the mammoth task of mooring the world's largest floating facility awaits. Situated 200 kilometers off northwestern Australia, a dedicated rigging crew begins the process. Their goal for the day is to secure the eighth mooring leg. This isn't just another day at work. The Prelude, when fully loaded, weighs a staggering 660,000 tons, six times heavier than the world's largest aircraft carriers. Given its location in a region notorious for extreme weather, the mooring system's reliability is paramount. It's designed to withstand cyclones, keeping the facility anchored securely. The mooring system's heart is the turret inside Prelude, enabling it to rotate. Beneath it lies one of the world's largest chains, with almost 25,000 links, anchored deep into the ocean floor. The team is now set to connect the eighth chain, ensuring Prelude's safety against storms. The process is intricate. The rigging team descends into the turret's depths, while tugs maintain Prelude's position. The Deep Orient crew retrieves the mooring line, and a colossal winch on Prelude stands ready. As the chain is hauled in, engineers monitor every move. The culmination of years of planning is in action. The chain's emergence is a sight to behold. A specific link indicates the correct chain length, ensuring the facility's anchoring to the seabed. Once the eighth mooring line is connected, Prelude achieves its storm-safe status. This is just one of the 16 mooring lines that will keep Prelude anchored for the next 25 years. A historic moment, indeed. The Asta Hanstein Spar is a marvel of modern engineering, representing a significant milestone in offshore natural gas extraction. Located 186 miles offshore in the Norwegian Sea, it is operated by Equinor and stands as the first spar platform on the Norwegian Continental Shelf, NCS. The platform is named after Asta Hanstein, a renowned Norwegian painter, writer, and early feminist.
Design features. The Asta Hanstein platform is a truss spar type, which allows condensate storage in the hull below sea level. This condensate can then be offloaded to a shuttle tanker. The gas produced is exported to the shore using steel catenary risers, SCR, marking the first time SCRs have been utilized in the Norwegian Sea. The platform's design is a collaborative effort, with the spar hull designed by Technip and the topsides by CB and I. Both components were fabricated by Hyundai Heavy Industries in South Korea before being transported to Norway for installation. The spar hull, with a height of 198 meters, 177 meters submerged, and a diameter of 50 meters, is the largest of its kind in terms of diameter and displacement. The platform exports natural gas through the Polar Pipeline to the Nyhamna Processing Plant on the Norwegian coast with the entire project costing approximately 37.5 billion Norwegian kroner. Transport and installation. The construction process of the Asta Hanstein spar was unique. Built on its side in dry dock on barges, it was floated off and then transported on the heavy ship Dockwise Vanguard to a fjord near Stord in western Norway. In the fjord, the spar was upended and the top sides were installed using the float over technique. The platform was then towed vertically to the Asta Hanstein gas field. 300 kilometers off Bodo on the northwest coast of Norway. It is moored north of the Arctic Circle using polyester moorings anchored to the seabed 1,200 meters below. Production began on the 17th of December 2018. Asta Hanstein Gas Field, originally known as the Lubba Gas Field and renamed after Asta Hanstein, the field was discovered in 1997, approximately 300 kilometers off Norway's coast. As the platform started up, gas from the surrounding Lubba, Haklang, and Snefred fields was exported to it. There are plans for future fields already discovered to be tied back to the Asta Hanstein platform through SCRs. The platform's design also accommodates the future expansion of additional risers and topside facilities. Positioned north of the Arctic Circle, the field faces perpetual darkness and sub-zero temperatures during winter. The Suez Canal, one of humanity's most monumental achievements, serves as a vital maritime passage for over 17,000 ships annually. However, a significant limitation existed. A 35-kilometer stretch allowed only one-way traffic, causing vessels to wait up to 11 hours for ships from the opposite direction. This inefficiency prompted a 21st-century upgrade, a new parallel canal to facilitate two-way traffic. Originally, experts estimated a three-year completion time. However, the Egyptian president ambitiously aimed to inaugurate the new canal within a year. This set in motion an unprecedented operation. With minimal preparation, the project was handed to a consortium, setting a daunting target, complete the canal in just 10 months. Equipment from across the globe, including Europe, Asia, and South America, converged on the site. The result? A 35-kilometer canal, 24 meters deep and 400 meters wide, carved straight through the desert.
the project scale was staggering. In total, 200 million cubic meters of sand were excavated, equivalent to relocating 80 Great Pyramids of Giza. At its peak, production reached 65,000 cubic meters a day. The project's nerve center, located in Ismailia, oversaw the logistics and equipment, with 28 units, the largest number of dredges ever used on a single project. With nearly 1,800 personnel on site and 23 dredges operating simultaneously, coordination was paramount. The team worked tirelessly, ensuring any issues were swiftly addressed, with operations running 24-7. Moratora Steel Industry is a leading player in the steel industry and is well known for its high quality steel products. In this part of the video, we will explore the process of free forging at their mill, specifically the forging of a gear blank from a square billet using a large hydraulic press machine. Free forging is a process in which metal is shaped into the desired form without the use of any dies or tools. This process is widely used in the steel industry for the production of a variety of components, including gears blank. The process of free forging involves heating the metal to a temperature where it becomes malleable and then applying pressure to shape it into the desired form. At the mill, the first step in the process of forging a gear blank from a square billet is to heat the steel billet to a temperature of around 1,200 degrees Celsius. This temperature is necessary to make the metal malleable enough for the forging process. The billet is then placed on the forging machine, which is a large hydraulic press. The next step in the process is to forge the steel billet into a round shape. This is achieved by applying pressure to the billet using the hydraulic press. The hydraulic press is a powerful machine that can apply a large amount of force, making it ideal for forging metal. The round shape is important because it provides a base shape for the gear blank to be formed. Once the billet has been forged into a round shape, the next step is to punch holes in the metal to form the gear blank. The hydraulic press is used to apply pressure to the metal, which causes the metal to flow into the holes, forming a perforated circular shape. The size and number of holes punched into the metal depend on the desired size and shape of the gear blank. Ingersoll Cutting Tools is a leading manufacturer of cutting tools for various industries, including gear machining. Gear machining is a process of cutting and shaping gears to precise specifications for use in various applications. Ingersoll Cutting Tools offers a wide range of gear machining tools, including solid carbide end mills, indexable carbide inserts, and high-speed steel hob cutters. These tools are designed to provide high accuracy, efficiency, and productivity in gear machining processes. One of the key benefits of using Ingersoll cutting tools in gear machining is the company's focus on innovation and technology. 
the company invests heavily in research and development to develop cutting-edge tools and solutions for gear machining, such as their proprietary PowerFeed Plus Hob system, which improves cutting speed and accuracy while reducing tool wear. The fully automatic ring production line of Mitsubishi Nagasaki machinery is a state-of-the-art system that utilizes advanced technology to produce high-quality rings with precision and efficiency. The production process starts with loading the raw material onto the conveyor belt, which is then fed into the rough ground forming machine. The rough ground forming machine shapes the material into a ring and then transfers it to the rolling mill. The rolling mill applies pressure and heat to the ring, gradually forming it into the desired shape and size. The finished ring is then transferred to the material handling system for unloading. Throughout the production process, various sensors and cameras monitor the temperature, pressure, and other key parameters to ensure the quality of the finished product. The entire process is fully automated, from loading the raw material to unloading the finished product, minimizing the need for human intervention and increasing efficiency. BM Gears is a leading manufacturer of gears and transmission components, located in Italy. The company has a wide range of gear cutting machines, including the Klingelberg C29 machine, which is used for dry cutting bevel gears. In this part, we will show the process of dry cutting bevel gears on the Klingelberg C29 machine, and how BM Gears uses this machine to produce high quality bevel gears with M5.5 module and 22 teeth. The Klingelberg C29 machine is a highly advanced bevel gear cutting machine that uses a dry cutting process. Dry cutting is a process that involves cutting the gears without the use of any coolant or lubricant. This process is environmentally friendly, as it eliminates the use of cutting fluids that can be harmful to the environment. It is also cost effective, as it reduces the need for expensive cutting fluids and the associated disposal costs. The dry cutting process on the Klingelberg C29 machine begins with the preparation of the gear blank. The gear blank is a piece of metal that is cut to the desired size and shape of the gear. It is then mounted on the machine and positioned in the cutting area. The cutting tool, which is a bevel gear cutter, is then positioned in the machine and adjusted to the correct angle and depth. Once the cutting tool is in position, the process begins. The cutting tool rotates at a high speed and cuts into the gear blank, removing metal and creating the teeth of the gear. The cutting process is controlled by the machine's computer system, which ensures that the gear is cut to the precise specifications required. The computer system also monitors the cutting process and makes adjustments as necessary to ensure that the cutting tool is cutting the gear correctly.
BM Gears uses the Klingelberg C29 machine to cut bevel gears with M5.5 module and 22 teeth. This is a common gear configuration that is used in a variety of applications, including automotive transmissions and industrial machinery. The M Gears use of the Klingelberg C29 machine ensures that the gears they produce are of the highest quality and precision. In addition to its dry cutting capabilities, the Klingelberg C29 machine also has other advanced features that make it a highly effective gear cutting machine. These features include a high-speed spindle, a precision cutting tool, and a sophisticated computer control system. The combination of these features allows the machine to produce gears that are highly accurate, with excellent surface finish and low noise levels. Bevel gears can be cut on a shaping machine using a rotary table and a special cutter called a bevel gear cutter. The process involves mounting the workpiece on the rotary table and aligning it with the cutter. The cutter is then fed into the workpiece at the desired angle and depth to cut the teeth. The rotary table is then rotated to the next position and the process is repeated until all the teeth are cut. Proper alignment and setup are critical to ensure the accuracy of the gear teeth. The cutting speed, feed rate, and depth of cut must also be carefully selected to produce a high-quality gear. Liebherr, a global leader in advanced engineering, has recently introduced a state-of-the-art gear hobbing and profile hobbing machine, the LC4000. This machine is designed to work with workpieces up to 4,000 mm in diameter and is capable of producing high-quality gears and profiles with exceptional accuracy and efficiency. One of the key features of the LC4000 is its high rigidity, which allows it to maintain stable cutting conditions even when working with large workpieces. This is achieved through a robust machine structure that is built to withstand high cutting forces and vibrations. The machine is also equipped with a powerful drive system that ensures smooth and precise motion control. In addition to its rigidity, the LC4000 is also designed for maximum versatility. It is equipped with a range of hobbing and milling tools that can be easily interchanged to produce different gear and profile types. This makes the machine ideal for a wide range of applications, from small-scale production runs to large-scale mass production. Another important feature of the LC4000 is its advanced control system. The machine is equipped with a sophisticated CNC control system that enables precise control of all machine functions. The control system is user-friendly and intuitive, allowing operators to easily program and adjust the machine settings as needed. To ensure the highest levels of quality and accuracy, the LC4000 is also equipped with a range of advanced sensors and monitoring systems. These systems are designed to detect and correct any deviations from the program settings, ensuring that the final product meets the required specifications.
the LC4000 is also designed with efficiency in mind. It is equipped with a range of automation features that help to reduce setup and changeover times. This includes a quick change tool system that allows operators to quickly and easily swap out hobbing and milling tools, as well as an automatic workpiece loading system that eliminates the need for manual handling. Heat treatment is a critical process in the manufacturing of gears. The heat treatment process involves heating the gear to a specific temperature and holding it there for a set amount of time before cooling it down in a controlled manner. This process alters the structure of the metal and improves its mechanical properties, making it stronger and more durable. Okubo Gears facility is equipped several different types of heat treatment, including carburizing, quenching, and tempering. Carburizing involves adding carbon to the surface of the gear to increase its hardness, while quenching rapidly cools the gear to increase its strength. Tempering involves reheating the gear to a specific temperature to reduce its brittleness and improve its toughness. Forged flanges are essential components in various industrial applications, serving to connect pipes, valves, and other equipment securely. The chosen material should possess the necessary mechanical properties and corrosion resistance. A cylindrical metal piece, known as a billet, is prepared by cutting, heating, and shaping it to the required size and shape. The billet is heated to a suitable temperature and placed in a forging machine. It is then subjected to tremendous pressure, causing it to deform and take the shape of a flange. The forging process ensures grain alignment and enhances the flange's mechanical properties. After forging, the excess material is trimmed and the central hole is pierced to match the pipe's diameter. This step ensures that the flange will fit precisely. The forged flange is heat-treated to improve its metallurgical properties, making it more resistant to stress, corrosion, and wear. The flange undergoes further machining to achieve the required dimensions and surface finish. This step ensures that it will fit perfectly with other components. The final product is subjected to rigorous quality control measures, including non-destructive testing and dimensional inspections to ensure it meets industry standards and customer specifications. The flange is usually coated or painted to protect it from corrosion. The 60K Press, the world's largest closed die forging machine, operates with incredible precision and power. Here's a brief overview of how it works. The heart of the 60K Press is its immense forging force, which is generated by a hydraulic system. A massive hydraulic pressurization system applies a tremendous load to the upper die, exerting a force of 540 meganewtons, equivalent to 60,000 short tons. This force is essential for shaping and compressing the metal into the desired form. Closed die forging involves two dies, the upper die and the lower die. These dies are specially designed to fit together precisely and create the desired shape. The metal workpiece, usually a superheated ingot or billet, is placed between the dies. The metal workpiece is heated to a precise temperature, ensuring it is malleable and ready for forging. This temperature varies depending on the type of metal being used.
With the heated workpiece positioned between the dies, the press applies the enormous forging force. The upper die is driven downward, while the lower die remains stationary. This compresses and shapes the metal within the confined space of the dies. What sets the 60K press apart is its high level of precision and automation. It incorporates advanced digital technology and a network of over 3,000 sensors to monitor and control the entire process. This automation ensures that the forging process is not only powerful but also incredibly accurate, reducing the chances of defects in the final product. The heavy forging industry is a cornerstone of manufacturing, providing essential components for various sectors, including aerospace, automotive, energy, and defense. It relies heavily on sophisticated machinery and equipment to transform massive metal ingots into precision-engineered parts. The role of heavy machinery in this industry is pivotal, both in terms of production efficiency and the ability to meet stringent quality requirements. In this article, we will delve into the world of heavy forging machinery and the critical numbers that underscore its importance. Hydraulic Forging Presses Hydraulic forging presses are workhorses of the heavy forging industry, capable of exerting immense pressure to shape and form metal. These machines come in various sizes, with tonnage ratings representing their power. For example, a 10,000-ton hydraulic press can apply 20 million pounds of force to manipulate metal. Such presses are instrumental in producing large components like shafts, gears, and turbine discs. Mechanical forging presses. Mechanical forging presses, while less common than their hydraulic counterparts, still play a significant role in heavy forging operations. These machines utilize a mechanical drive system, typically a crankshaft and eccentric drive, to deliver force to the workpiece. A 4,000-ton mechanical press, for instance, can generate 8 million pounds of pressure for metal shaping tasks. These presses are known for their speed and precision, making them suitable for specific applications. Drop Hammers Drop hammers, often used in open die forging, rely on gravity to deliver rapid, high-impact blows to the workpiece. The weight of the hammer, expressed in pounds, determines the force applied to the metal. For instance, a 10,000-pound drop hammer exerts a considerable impact on the material, allowing for efficient deformation and shaping of larger parts. Steam hammers. Steam hammers have historical significance in forging and were a major innovation during the Industrial Revolution. These hammers use steam power to strike the workpiece. Steam hammers come in various sizes, and their energy is often measured in foot-pounds. A medium-sized steam hammer might deliver 50,000 to 100,000 foot-pounds of energy, allowing for precision and versatility in shaping metal. Modern CNC controls. The integration of computer numerical control CNC, systems into heavy forging machinery has revolutionized the industry. CNC controls allow for precise programming of forging processes, leading to consistency and repeatability. The precision is often measured in micrometers, mu m, or thousandths of an inch. Modern CNC forging machines can achieve tolerances as tight as 0.005 inches. 0.127 millimeters, ensuring that forged parts meet strict quality standards. Manipulator robots. 
manipulator robots are used to handle and position heavy workpieces during forging. These machines can have lifting capacities ranging from 5 tons to 50 tons or more, allowing them to maneuver the massive ingots used in heavy forging. The precise control of these robots ensures the safety of workers and the accuracy of positioning during forging operations. Induction Heating Systems Induction heating is a critical aspect of the heavy forging process, as it prepares the metal for deformation. The power output of induction heating systems is measured in kilowatts, kW. A high-power induction heating system can deliver up to 1,000 kilowatts or more. This high-intensity heat source allows for rapid and controlled heating of the workpiece to the required forging temperature, often in a matter of seconds. Die Design Software Die design is an essential aspect of heavy forging, as the shape and quality of the dies directly impact the final product. Specialized software for die design utilizes 3D modeling and finite element analysis fee, to optimize the dies. It helps engineers create dies with intricate shapes and contours, ensuring that the forged parts meet the desired specifications. Modern die design software can reduce lead times and material waste while improving die life and component quality. Forging Material Handling Equipment Heavy forging involves the manipulation of massive metal ingots, which can weigh several tons. Overhead cranes and mobile gantry systems are critical pieces of equipment used to transport these heavy materials. These systems often have lifting capacities ranging from 5 tons to 50 tons, allowing for the efficient movement of ingots and forged components within the facility. Material testing equipment. Ensuring the quality and integrity of forged components is paramount. Material testing equipment, such as ultrasonic testing machines and magnetic particle inspection systems, are used to detect defects or irregularities in the forged parts. These machines provide precise measurements, often in millimeters or micrometers, ensuring that components meet the required quality standards. Heat treatment furnaces. Heat treatment is a crucial step in the heavy forging process to improve material properties. Large heat treatment furnaces are used to subject forged components to specific temperature profiles. These furnaces can reach temperatures exceeding 2000 degrees Celsius, 3632 degrees Fahrenheit, and are equipped with advanced control systems to maintain precise temperature tolerances. Environmental controls. As with any heavy industry, environmental considerations are essential. Heavy forging facilities incorporate advanced environmental control systems to manage emissions and energy consumption. These systems help reduce the environmental footprint of heavy forging operations while meeting regulatory requirements. Automation and Robotics Automation in heavy forging has gained traction, driven by the need for efficiency and precision. Robotic systems are increasingly used for tasks such as loading and unloading materials, die handling, and quality inspection. The number of industrial robots in heavy forging facilities is on the rise, contributing to improved productivity and worker safety. Safety systems. Safety is a paramount concern in the heavy forging industry due to the high forces and temperatures involved. Safety systems, 
including emergency shutdown mechanisms, safety interlocks, and personal protective equipment, are integral to ensuring the well-being of workers and the protection of valuable equipment. Energy consumption and efficiency. Heavy forging operations are energy intensive, with power consumption often measured in megawatt hours, MWH. To enhance sustainability, the industry is investing in energy efficient technologies, such as recuperative heat exchangers and energy recovery systems, which can significantly reduce energy consumption. Maintenance and reliability. Heavy forging machinery requires robust maintenance programs to ensure optimal performance and longevity. The industry often measures machine reliability using metrics such as mean time between failures, MTBF, and mean time to repair, MTTR, to minimize downtime and maximize productivity. Forging is an age-old manufacturing technique that has undergone a remarkable evolution over the centuries. This process involves shaping metal by applying heat and pressure, typically through the use of hammers or mechanical presses. The development of forging technology has been a journey from primitive blacksmithing to the precision and automation of the modern era. In this article, we will explore this journey, highlighting key milestones and innovations that have shaped the forging industry. Ancient origins of forging. Forging can trace its roots back to ancient civilizations. The earliest forges date as far back as 4500 BC, and these were rudimentary setups where metals were heated and hammered into shape. Initially, blacksmiths relied on simple tools and their skills to manually shape metals. Early innovations. One of the most significant early innovations in forging technology was the discovery of various metal alloys. Bronze, an alloy of copper and tin, played a pivotal role in the advancement of forging during the Bronze Age, around 3000 BC. This allowed for the creation of more durable and sophisticated tools and weapons. The Iron Age. The Iron Age, which began around 1200 BC, marked a crucial turning point in forging technology. Iron, due to its abundance and malleability, rapidly replaced bronze as the metal of choice. Blacksmiths honed their skills to create intricate objects, from weapons to agricultural tools. The role of water-powered hammers. The advent of water-powered hammers in the Roman Empire introduced a more efficient way to shape metal. These hammers used the kinetic energy of falling water to deliver powerful blows, significantly reducing the physical labor required. The Middle Ages and the emergence of craft guilds during the Middle Ages, the art of forging continued to evolve, and craft guilds began to emerge. These guilds set standards for the quality of forged goods and trained apprentices in the techniques of the trade. Skilled blacksmiths produced intricate armor, swords, and decorative items.
The Industrial Revolution, the Industrial Revolution, which started in the late 18th century, had a profound impact on forging technology. The invention of steam engines and mechanical hammers mechanized the process, allowing for mass production of forged items. This era saw the birth of large-scale forging operations and the development of the steam hammer by James Naismith in 1837, which greatly improved efficiency and precision. The impact of metallurgy, advances in metallurgy, particularly in the 19th century, led to a greater understanding of the properties of different metals and alloys. The ability to control and manipulate the microstructure of metals through heat treatment processes revolutionized the forging industry. For example, the Bessemer process for steel production, patented by Henry Bessemer in 1856, made high-quality steel more readily available for forging applications. World War I and II, the forging industry played a pivotal role during the World Wars. The demand for precision forged components, such as aircraft parts, tanks, and artillery, spurred innovation and improvements in forging technology. It was during this time that the use of hydraulic presses and drop hammers became widespread. Modern precision forging, the latter half of the 20th century witnessed a transformation in forging technology, driven by advancements in materials science, automation, and computer-aided design and manufacturing, CAD, CAM. Precision forging, a technique that produces near-net shape components with minimal waste, emerged as a game-changer. Numerical control, CNC, forging. The integration of computer numerical control, CNC, systems into forging processes revolutionized the industry. CNC forging machines allow for precise control of temperature, pressure, and deformation, resulting in components with tight tolerances and improved material properties. This shift towards automation and precision has been particularly important in the aerospace and automotive industries. Improved materials and alloys, the development of advanced materials, such as titanium and superalloys, has expanded the applications of forging technology. These materials offer high strength, corrosion resistance, and other desirable properties. Forging has played a vital role in shaping these materials into critical components for aerospace, medical, and energy applications. Simulation and modeling, computer-aided engineering (CAE) and finite element analysis (FE) have become essential tools for optimizing the forging process. These simulations help engineers predict how a material will deform under various conditions, leading to more efficient and cost-effective designs. Innovations in die design. The design of forging dies, which shape the metal, has evolved significantly. Computer-aided design, CAD, and computer-aided manufacturing, CAM, have allowed for complex die designs that reduce the need for secondary machining operations. Environmental considerations. In the modern era, environmental concerns have led to the development of cleaner and more efficient forging processes. 
Technologies like electromagnetic forming and isothermal forging aim to reduce energy consumption and emissions while maintaining product quality. Three D printing and additive manufacturing. The emergence of 3D printing and additive manufacturing technologies has begun to impact the forging industry. While these technologies are not traditional forging methods, they offer new possibilities for creating intricate shapes and designs in metals, which can complement traditional forging techniques. Smart Manufacturing The concept of smart manufacturing which incorporates the Internet of Things, IoT, data analytics, and artificial intelligence, is being applied to forging operations. This enables real-time monitoring of the process, predictive maintenance, and continuous improvement. Future Directions As forging technology continues to evolve, there are several promising areas of development. These include the use of advanced materials like carbon fiber composites, further automation with robotic systems, and increased sustainability through recycling and reduced waste. A 5,000-ton forging machine is a massive hydraulic press used in the manufacturing industry to forge metal parts. This machine works on the principle of hydraulic force to apply pressure to the metal workpiece, which is then compressed and shaped according to the desired shape and size. The forging process begins by heating the metal workpiece to a temperature where it can be easily shaped. Once the metal is hot, it is placed on the lower die of the forging machine, and the upper die is brought down to apply pressure. The hydraulic system in the machine provides the necessary force to move the upper die down with tremendous force, which compresses the metal between the two dies. The 5,000-ton forging machine has a capacity to apply up to 5,000 tons of pressure, which is enormous. This force is enough to shape even the toughest of metals like steel or titanium. The metal workpiece is slowly shaped and compressed between the two dies, and the hydraulic pressure is maintained until the desired shape and size is achieved. The hydraulic system in the forging machine consists of a large piston, which is driven by a powerful hydraulic pump. The hydraulic fluid is stored in a reservoir and pumped into the cylinder, which moves the piston. The movement of the piston is transferred to the upper die, which applies pressure to the metal workpiece. The 5,000-ton forging machine also has a range of features that make it a versatile tool for forging different shapes and sizes of metal parts. The machine can be programmed to perform different forging processes like drawing, shaking, punching, saddle forging, bending, shifting, chopping, and cutting, among others. These processes are essential in creating complex shapes, which require precision and accuracy. The machine is also equipped with advanced controls that enable operators to monitor and adjust the forging process, depending on the metal being forged. The controls also ensure that the machine operates safely, preventing accidents and reducing downtime.
end mills are cutting tools used in milling applications to remove material from a workpiece by rotating the tool along its axis. The aerospace industry has unique requirements for cutting tools, and end mills for aluminum high-speed processing are a common choice due to their efficiency and precision. In this part, we will discuss the features and benefits of end mills for aluminum high-speed processing in the aerospace industry. The aerospace industry is one of the most important sectors of the global economy, generating billions of dollars in revenue every year. The manufacture of aircraft components requires high-precision machining tools capable of processing a wide range of materials, including aluminum. Aluminum is a popular choice for aerospace components due to its lightweight, high strength, and corrosion resistance. To meet the demands of the aerospace industry, end mills for aluminum high-speed processing have been developed. End mills are cutting tools used in milling applications to remove material from a workpiece. They have a rotating cutting surface with multiple teeth, which can remove material from the workpiece as they rotate. End mills come in different sizes and shapes, and each is designed for a specific purpose. End mills for aluminum high-speed processing are designed to work with aluminum, a material that requires high-speed machining to achieve the desired finish. The aerospace industry demands precision and accuracy in every component used in aircraft, from the smallest parts to the largest structures. End mills for aluminum high-speed processing are essential in creating high-quality and accurate parts, especially in the aircraft industry. These end mills have a range of features that make them ideal for working with aluminum. For example, they are designed with a high helix angle, which helps to reduce vibration and improve chip evacuation. One of the significant challenges of machining aluminum is preventing the material from melting during the machining process. This can cause damage to the tool and the workpiece, resulting in a poor finish. To overcome this problem, end mills for aluminum high-speed processing are made with specialized coatings that provide high temperature resistance. These coatings can help to reduce the heat generated during machining, improving tool life and surface finish. Another challenge in machining aluminum is the tendency for the material to stick to the cutting edge of the tool, known as galling. End mills for aluminum high-speed processing are designed with a coating that helps to reduce galling. The coatings create a barrier between the aluminum and the cutting edge of the tool, preventing the material from sticking and reducing the risk of damage to the tool or the workpiece. In addition to the coatings, end mills for aluminum high-speed processing are also made from high-quality materials that can withstand the rigors of high-speed machining. 
These materials are often made from solid carbide, a hard and durable material that can withstand high temperatures and high-speed machining. Solid carbide end mills are also resistant to wear and tear, which can increase the lifespan of the tool and reduce the need for frequent replacements.